Welcome back to TVS Tech Digest. Today's feature will focus on another source of green energy which are being produced all around the world. The use of lignocellulosic materials like forest leftovers, agricultural waste and energy grasses, among others, shows great potential for generating bioenergy. These resources are widely available worldwide and also address concerns about food shortages that were associated with first-generation biofuels produced from edible materials. Napier grass, also known as elephant grass, is a productive and versatile forage grass native to Africa and Southeast Asia. Due to its high yield, it is widely used as feed for livestock and in bioenergy applications. The Sarawak government is prepared to provide financial assistance to the Sarawak Tropical Peat Research Institute, T-R-O-P-I, to conduct scientific research on Napier grass. Sarawak Premier, Datuk Patingi Tan Sri Abang Johari Tun Openg said that this grass can not only serve as a biomass source for generating electricity, but can also offer additional income to small-scale farmers. Well, you plan or you have the growth of uh, Seco Palm, perhaps in between, if the soil is good, I would propose you make a scientific study on the validity of having Napia grass in between. This grass can become source of biomass. And this biomass is turned into pellet, and this uh, pellet can become a feedstock to produce electricity. It happened yesterday, I went to a factory in Vintulu, and I saw this factory producing uh, grass pellet and they are selling to track our plant in the United Kingdom. We just a matter of only about 800 hectares. They produce 2.5 million tons per year. In other words, if you have a sago farm, in between, we can plant uh, this uh, napia grass and become an additional income to the farmers. Abang Johari pointed out that napier grass can be a biomass source, which can be converted into grass pellets. These pellets can be used as peat stock to generate electricity. Studies need to be conducted to find out whether sago trees can be planted with napier grass in between them and hence this can provide farmers with additional income. Not only can the grass be used for pellets, but it can also be used as feed for the animals. According to Abang Johari, these grass pellets are already being produced at a factory in Bintulu, covering an area of 800 hectares. While it may be a relatively new energy crop in Sarawak, Thai farmers have been cultivating it for over 30 years, with more than 130 varieties. This fast-growing perennial grass can reach a height of 10 to 15 feet and can be harvested five to six times annually. With an energy output to input ratio of approximately 25 to one, it emerges as one of the most promising energy crops for the creation of cost-effective and efficient bioenergy systems. Due to its significant cellulose and xylan content, napier grass holds promise as a viable source for biogas production. When its structure undergoes hydrolysis, it breaks down into monomeric sugars that can be utilized as substrates for microbial activity. It exhibits numerous favorable attributes as an energy crop, including a short growth cycle, a relatively high methane content, and a high level of water use efficiency. Additionally, napier grass promises a high content of easily digestible organic matter, along with high yields and the ability to withstand drought conditions. These qualities make it an excellent feedstock for anaerobic digestion processes. The use of napier grass as a feedstock can help address the issue of uncertain feedstock procurement, as continuous and reliable supply to biogas plants is often reliant on external parties. The Royal Thai government strengthened its support for renewable power generation from napier grass for two reasons. To generate electricity to feed the grid, and to produce CBG as an alternative for exhausting NGV and as a substitute LPG. For Sarawak, 
The key research challenges for Napier grass production would be whether the local ecological conditions and water supply sources could produce high-yield potential crops apart from its cost-effective management methods. Keep watching TVS Channel 122 on Astro TV, MyTV, Unify TV, and www.tvsarawak.my for more tech news.